Let's do this. What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Outdoor Chef Life. I'm Taku. And today I'm out with these other guys right here. Nick Fish, Danny, and Die Hard Fishing. First time out on the kayak in about two months. Gonna go for some rockfish, lingcod. Something, something easy to catch. Cause I've been, I've been going out from shore and getting skunked a lot. So I think uh, today we'll catch some fish. I'm using this, my friend Miguel made this crazy swim bait. So we'll test it out, it's huge. It's like 10 inches at least. By this point, it had already been about an hour of fishing and that was my very first bite that I had all day. And it was a really slow day of fishing. I didn't end up catching anything on that big swim bait, unfortunately, uh, Miguel. We actually put out some crab traps as well, so went to go check those, pulled one up and ended up with just one crab that was barely just a legal size. But one Dungeness crab is enough to make a dish, so I'm happy with that. I'll take it. At this point, I was using a shrimp fly, which is a very common rig for uh, rock fishing. And using that for about an hour and not catching anything, I ended up switching to my other rod and put some anchovies on there. And finally, uh, that's when I got a fish. There we go. There we go, finally. There you go. Skunk off. Get that skunk off. No, that's cobra. Hey yo! Got one! Finally! Just had to switch rods. On the anchovy. Hey, good good change. Yeah. When something's not working, you gotta change it up. Heck yeah. And just after that, I ended up catching another one, another rockfish. After this fish, I ended up heading in because the wind was picking up, the waves were getting bigger, and the rain was starting to come down a little. <laughs> Dang, it is pouring right now. One of the pedal drives actually broke, so I was only going half power on the kayak. So Nick Fish actually ended up towing me in, and I was trolling anchovies on the way in, and I actually ended up hooking up with a nice kelp greenling. 15. Just under 15. All right, guys, now we're back. I didn't get to cook the fish yesterday, so we're going to cook it today. But let me show you first what I do if I don't cook the fish on the same day that I catch it. Uh, check it out here. So here's the kelp greenling that I caught yesterday. And if I'm not filleting the fish or cooking the fish on the same day uh, that I catch it, I actually do this. I always scale it and gut it and fill the gut cavity with some uh, paper towels so it'll try to you know absorb that blood that's in there and uh, it'll stay fresher much longer. Because if you leave the gut in there and the blood in there, uh, it's going to uh, kind of ruin the meat. By gutting it and putting putting the towel in there, keeps it much fresher, uh, much longer. So there we go. Take that head off. Okay, I always start on the left side of the fish with the back towards me. First cut is always just cutting the skin. There you go. That's it. That's the first cut. Second cut go into the flesh all the way to the middle bone so now you can lift it a little and then ride up that 
middle bone a little. There you go. Now that's, that middle bone is all fully exposed. Now I'm gonna turn the fish. Do the same thing. First cut is always just the skin. And so you can see that lift the meat and then I can, I can just literally just see that there's a hole right through there. And then I can just cut the cut through the rib cage here. There you go. No meat, no meat, huh? There you go. That's how you do it. And I always get asked this question, if you're going to skin the fish, why do you even scale it? Right, that's a very common question that I get. First of all, if you scale the fish, it's easier to fillet. You're going to get a much cleaner fillet. Second of all, if I have the scales on, the scales are going to come off onto the knife and then get my workspace all scaly and messy, stay clean, you know, everything kind of organized and clean. I don't want scales ending up in my food as either, so. Going to make fish egg rolls and we're doing kind of two different ways one with regular uh, egg roll wrapper but i actually have a friend uh yen shout out food is why i'm broke she says uh she's vietnamese and she says that egg rolls are way better if you use rice paper so we're going to test that theory today so we're doing a little food experiment with the catch and cook I'm kind of curious. I've never had egg rolls with rice paper. So, in the kelp green league, I'm going to put this in the mixing bowl. Put some of the some of the juice in here. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Here's all the crab meat that I got out of that Dungeness crab. You can see it's a little raw still, but that's okay because I'm gonna cook it again anyways, so it's perfect. All right, I'm gonna flip the board to the clean side. I'm gonna cut some vegetables. There we go. Oh, you know what? You can put this crab inside the bowl with the uh, with a little bit of that crab juice. So I got crab in this bowl, kelp greenling in this bowl.
A little bit in the crab, a little bit in the fish. Yeah, so that's how you get the peel off. Yeah. Spoon is the easiest way. Uh, bean sprouts. Garlic. All right, so those are all the ingredients. Um, basically, I'm put the same exact thing in with the crab as well. So I'm just gonna mix this whole thing up. Oh, I forgot the important right. thing. Oh, the noodles. Yeah. Did. All right. Actually, I totally blanked on one of the main ingredients in there. Um, I'm halfway done with the rolling, but I totally forgot to put the noodles in. So I'm going to do that right now. Just going to just chop it up a little. And we'll toss it in there. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. That was my bad. That's an important ingredient in egg rolls. All right, so I'm done with the the traditional like egg roll wrapper ones, but I totally forgot the noodles. That was my bad, but uh, that's, it's all right. That'll be okay. So those are the crab ones, and this is for kelp greenling. We'll put those off to the side for now, and now I'm gonna do the do the rice wrapper ones. All right, guys, well, here it is. Here's the finished product. We have the kelp greenling egg roll with the regular wrapper and with the rice wrapper. And the same thing with the Dungeness crab, Dungeness crab egg roll. 
I've never had fish egg rolls or crab egg rolls before. Yeah. I don't think that's really a thing. Also, it's uh, we're doing Vietnamese dish two episodes in a row. But you know what? I love Vietnamese food. It's like the f cuisine that I could probably eat the most often. Yeah. It's like it never gets boring. Vietnamese and Thai food. Love Vietnamese food. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. I'm drinking a rare barrel, um, soaking up rays, which has guava and passion fruit. <laughs> uh, what is this? IPA from McKellar. Oh, McKellar IPA. Oh. It's called the Windy Hill. It's good. Yes, Let's eat this. I'll try the fish one first. I think this is... That's fish too. Mm, I'm going to try the... Just the regular wrapper. Yeah. Kelp Greenling. Let's try this. Mmm. Mm. Whoa. Mm. Fish egg rolls. It was good. Yeah. It was really good. Not bad. Mm. You don't want sauce? Mm. I like it. I like it. I dig it. Oh, heck yeah. Mm. And we have some dipping sauce as well. Nice That's that crab. sweet chili, garlic, or not sweet chili, uh, fish sauce, garlic, chili uh, sauce. Now let me try the crab one. Mm. I enjoy that. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I enjoy that. Why don't they sell this? Very much. People would pay. Oh, totally. We had like a $20 <laughs> crab egg roll. Dungeons crab egg rolls? Mm -hmm. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Dungeons crab egg rolls. Mm. Oh, that's spectacular. Yeah, that's way better than the fish. Oh, that's so good. All right, let's try it with the rice wrapper down. This is, um, I believe this is fish. Mmm. 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 It does change the flavor. Yeah. I wasn't really expecting much. <laughs> it's different. Mm -hmm. The texture, it's crunchy, but it also has this chewiness mm -hmm. that the rice wrapper has. And that works. It's so good. Yeah. That is different. Mm -hmm. And that's in a good way, like a really good way. Whoa. You guys got to try that. Egg rolls with rice wrappers. Heck yeah. I think Yen's I'm on be board. Jealous. I'm on board. Oh yeah, Yen's going to be jealous that I made Dungeons <laughs> Crab egg rolls. Thanks for the idea though, Yen. That is, it is. Yeah. It is good. All right, the crab with the rice paper. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Mm. 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 I don't even need any sauce. It's so good just yeah. as is. Okay. I think um, the filling inside was a little wet, so you know it's not as crispy as it can be, I think. Mm. But it's still wow. The flavors, wow. Really good. So good. The texture, perfect, on point. I thought I was gonna like the egg roll more. Yeah? You like the rice paper more? Mm -hmm. The rice paper is where it's at. It somehow adds taste even though um, mm -hmm. I feel like it usually doesn't have much flavor. Yeah, but it does add taste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is really good. Mm. I don't really want to get it. Egg rolls that. are good. You don't want to get it? <laughs> Go ahead, you can eat that one. Egg rolls, yeah, I don't make egg rolls very often, but that's really good. And I didn't do like the best job filling them or rolling them for that matter. Texture is amazing. The flavor, the crab flavor, the ginger coming through as well. And yeah, the rest of the ingredients work very well in here. Oh man, that was perfect. Yeah. So this is gonna make it into the top five, I think. Top five? I think top five. Let's see, there's crab ramen, lobster oh. ramen, crab benedict. Okonomiyaki and takoyaki. Oh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys ever had fish or crab egg rolls before? Might be a thing already, but if it's not, oh, it should be. <laughs> Woo! I need to wash it down with a little beer. Another delicious meal on the balcony. <laughs> yeah. Woo! That was good. Super good. Yeah, heck yeah. Well, if you guys liked the video, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next one.
Peace. Jocelyn's been planting in balcony garden since the quarantine started. And check it out, it's coming along. I got my strawberries over here. I got beets here with a little bit of kale. It's a companion planting. This is my raspberries. You can actually see them already coming. This row is all my tomatoes pretty much. Different types, that one's tomatillo on the right side, um, cherry and roma on the left side. So over here, we have them all in cardboard boxes. I felt really bad about all our online purchases with, during quarantine, so I decided to reuse them. And you can actually reinforce them with tape. Yeah, it's been working pretty well. Um, I think they've been in here for about two months now and there's not really any damage to the boxes. We got the kale. Over here, we got some carrots. We have a line of shallots, I believe. Oh no, chives, arugula, and radish. 